welcome back. Next up we have Mark Merlin, a regular here at the Open Hardware Miniconf. He's going to run a pre-recorded presentation which will go for about 12 minutes and then take questions at the end. So uh, any questions that come up, please put them into the chat and we will do those at the end. So for now, here's the presentation. Hello everyone, uh, sorry for not being here in person. Uh, hopefully we'll get to do this again next year. In the meantime, uh, here's my presentation on how LEDs got out of control. And I think the first ones are free and then it ends up being a very expensive hobby. <laughs> so those are all the links you'll want uh, if you want to look at all the projects, you can go back and rewind to this little slide and it will have the links to everything else you need. Uh, here specifically is a whole story of uh, basically this talk in a much longer page if you'd like to have details. So let's start with um, the first, uh, well, one of the first Arduino mini comps, which had um, a slightly improved board. Um, it had some shiny thing that had different colors on it uh, that you can see on the screen. And then it had an LCD that I wrote a glue driver for. Um, that one I made a menu for where I could actually select the color components for the LED and how quickly it would pulse uh, using the uh, potentiometer here. Um, so that was my uh, first project. As I said, the first one is free. Um, I thought, well, if I get a few more of these, um, I get this little guy that was super cheap. Um, the problem is that they didn't have enough um, inputs to control all the LEDs. So they were controlled line by line, um, line scanning, and you could select on each row which color you wanted on or off. And by flipping the colors very quickly on or off, you could create color components. And I wrote a driver for that, which it shows uh, is shown in this picture. Uh, that kind of burned a Christmas, but hey, it was an uh, interesting, <laughs> a good little ex experience. And actually uh, related to what I'm doing now on the bigger panels that I'm currently using. All right, so this brings us to this project um, from a later mini in 2016. Uh, that was supposed to take care of your plants and see how you dirt, uh, humidity, temperature, and you'd, um, you dirt to see how um, how much watering you were doing. It seems kind of obvious to add a new pixel ring to that because bling, I guess, and bling is good, right? So blings make smiles. Um, so that was probably my first set of new pixels. A lot of fun to program. Um, I had more fun with new pixels than actually the main uh, reason to use that board. Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, and then the following year, well, if you have a lot of pixels, that actually creates a screen, and that's what a TFT is. Um, so I got to play with uh, programming that, made an entire interface. Um, but as you'll notice, there's two more NeoPixels there. I guess no matter what you do, NeoPixels end up in the projects that you get in the Miniconf. So I think the hint was pretty clear. Um, if you have a few more than two, you end up with a string. And if you have a string, you can do cool stuff. So that's what this is. I made an outfit that had uh, uh, three, sorry, four new pixel, pixel strings on the arms and legs. Uh, so those were all controllable independently and I had moving patterns on them. And in the middle of the shirt was just LEDs that didn't change, uh, they could change color, but they were all together. Um, so you can see the difference between the new pixels here and these guys that are all the same. And that's all the circuitry that I made for that. So that was back in 2017. Um, that was fun and it kind of got out of hand a little bit. So just, uh, I guess a little bit over a year and a half later, um, I had issues with the previous shirt where um, washing it was a problem because everything was glued onto it. And yes, so that was a problem. I figured, well, what if I make the LEDs removable? I should probably put a panel or something. And by then you can, you can buy those uh, near pixel panels. Uh, there was eight times 32, so I had three of them in parallel. And I made a panel to, to go in the front of the shirt and the back. And of course, now I got a matrix of it. So that was the next version. Uh, I have, so I have a whole page that explains kind of what I can do with it and you know, how it was made and built and how, yeah, how it goes. You can see the pixels are actually um, still reasonably big. They're about one centimeter. Um, the wiring isn't terrible. Uh, this shows one pixel being replaced, uh, a pixel that died. Uh, all the pixels, pixels are in line, so if one pixel dies, everything after that stops working. But even for my bad soldering skills, it was manageable. Now, 
yeah, this happened. Uh, someone who hates me gave me uh, 4,000 pixels or a few more than 4,000. So the obvious thing was to do a 64-64 matrix. That burned an entire week of my life. Do not do this. It's extremely stupid. Um, and yeah, it was a lot of work to lay them all out. Um, the up output looked like this. Um, it was very nice. And then you'll see the next version of my um, shirt next to it. And you can notice they're running the same pattern. And that's kind of the general idea. So um, this is where frame buffer GFX came in. After doing some work with different uh, pieces of hardware, I realized, hey, I need to have a common um, library that controls everything so that my code can run everywhere the same. So you can see, you can do some really weird mappings like this would be uh, a user of mine did those uh, using uh, digits and made with NeoPixels and you did a custom mapping so that you could write as if it were uh, a rectangle of uh, pixels, but it would actually end up in the right pixels in the middle using uh, that mapping. The more typical mappings are, sorry, um, these where the, you have pre-made matrices like these and they're daisy chained. But as you can see now, the numbers are not in sequence. And that's what NeoMatrix does. It does a mapping of uh, pixel, you know, eight, eight, and it puts it in the right place um, since the ordering has to be changed. Um, so going back to this uh, library, so now I have the same code and I can be running either on NeoPixels using NeoMatrix or RGB panels uh, running on top of smart matrix uh, that was using an ESP32. You can also do that on a TZ. And so I made a glue library that goes on top of that. So that way I can use frame buffer GFX on both. So there, I'll show you a little bit of a graph. Uh, ASCII art is the best, obviously. Frame buffer GFX is basically the frame buffer, 24 bits uh, per pixel. Um, it uh, talks to Adafruit GFX underneath. Uh, it can emulate, uh, sorry, it can be compatible with LED matrix, which is a different API uh, on top of Neo, uh, NeoPixels. So if you write your code for NeoPixels using LED matrix, you can actually rerun it on everything else that I support. And there's also the fast LED API, which is supported. So this is where cool because you can write a fast LED code, but then by going through frame buffer GFX, you can run it on anything underneath that is not uh, NeoPixels. So on the top side, of course, you do have NeoPixels, then you have smart matrix uh, for RGB panels. Those are TFTs. So I wrote a glue library to talk to TFTs. Um, underneath, I realized, hey, that would be really cool if I could run my code on Linux because I would write it so much quicker. I can run the GDB. I don't have the compile upload cycle and it's just win all around. The next reason, of course, was to run on our Raspberry Pi because there's that really good driver RPI RGB panel um, that allows you to run a lot more RGB panels quicker than you can do with a uh, smaller chip um, like uh, Teensy. All right, so I'll go quickly. So this is basically uh, my shirt uh, running RGB panels. Um, it's running a higher resolution that's uh, 6496. And yeah, if you go back to those pages, you'll get a video that shows you uh, all the patterns running on it. I have to go quickly. So now this is the exact same size in RGB panels. The pixels that used to be four millimeter are now just two. And this is uh, 128 times 64 per panel. And you can see here, there's an Raspberry Pi with a, a Electro Dragon board on top, and it has three different channels. So it's running those uh, panels in parallel for to refresh them at full speed because they basically um, full refresh panels. So you have to keep refreshing the lines over and over again. And that's how you emulate the colors a little bit like the first um, eight by matrix that I showed you. So I wrote again, the glue library to make this work. So now I have my ordinary code running on top of Raspberry Pi with no rewrite on a completely different piece of hardware. Then I told you about uh, Linux. So I can definitely run that code on Linux um, as shown here. Um, let's see if I can play it for you. There we go. So this is the ESP32 running on its own RGB panel. It is connected to Linux via a USB port and Linux is running the same code, but run independently. So it's getting the command um, to Wi-Fi right now from ESP32, ESP32 saying, hey, I'm running demo number whatever. And 
then it gets to Linux, which says, oh, okay, I should run the same demo. And it renders it locally in a resolution that's four times as big. So this is how I was writing and debugging the code very quickly. From here, um, I also made some really big panels. Um, okay, this is starting to get a little bit expensive. The panels on the left were actually free. Um, the ones, because they were returns, they were not compatible uh, at the time. But um, with the people who bought them, let me see if I can actually play this video. The play button is being hidden. Let me see, click that. There we go. Um, so the ones on the left were free. The ones on the right are 64128. Those panels actually cost $50 a piece. Um, so if you do the math, it adds up a little bit. But look at this, isn't that gorgeous, right? So this is basically uh, what you can do when you go bigger. All right, but back to my shirt. So the idea is you can see on top of the screen, uh, that was my old panel that was 9660, sorry, 6496. The new one is now twice as much, 128 times 192. I say twice, it's actually four times number of pixels. So, uh, Basically, the ASP32 is still getting the commands of what to do, and it's rendering now to a panel that will not be connected. It's then connected to the Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi will be doing its own rendering um, and a resolution that's four times bigger. So some demos are the same like these, and they're being rendered separately on the Raspberry Pi. So this is gonna be the new shirt I'm gonna be wearing. All right, and I think that gives you a reasonable idea of what it looks like. Um, again, the idea is that it all runs on top of frame buffer GFX. It's all the same code. It was written for Arduino. Now it runs on ESP8266, ESP32, TeamZ, uh, Raspberry Pi, and Linux. And the best part again on Linux is I can just debug the code and do it on my laptop without having to do the upload cycle. So there you go. Uh, if you have any questions, hopefully I'll be here to answer them. Hey, welcome back. So thank you, Mark, for that presentation. That was pre-recorded, but I have Mark live right here now so that he can answer any questions that you might have. So if you have questions, it's not too late, put them in the chat. Uh, there was a question from Nicola who asked, what's your favorite LED technology? Is it matrices, strip LEDs, NeoPixels, something else? Right. All right, so uh, hi everyone. Uh, there were so many demos that I was just asking for demo fail, so I cheated a little bit. I hope you'll forgive me. Um, so um, LEDs. I, well, I guess I'm going to try to make everyone uh, seasick. Um, I'll probably show you since I have on my desk now. So those are RGB panels. Um, these guys are the same those, which are just low resolution. Um, if you look up there, they're still RGB panels. And as you can see, they're pretty big, right? Um, so the panels on the right, there's actually, uh, let me count them right, there's 12 of them, and they're 50 bucks a piece US, so they are not that cheap. Uh, but if you count, there's actually about a thousand, sorry, a hundred thousand pixels. And if one pixel is three LEDs, that's actually 300,000 LEDs. So that's a lot. Um, new pixels are just easy to drive. They're, they remember what you tell them. You don't have to keep refreshing them. You don't have to emulate colors. They're just easier to work with. But turns out, if you thought that was expensive, the one up there, in uh, new pixels, it would cost about I think about 10 times more because uh, NeoPixels, of course, have a chip in each LED um, or each pixel, and that adds to the cost. Also, they can only be so small. Um, mm -hmm. So the ones I have, uh, I showed you like on the left and right, uh, those are on the left here, they're two millimeter per pixel. Those are four. And then here you can see NeoPixels, that's one pixel, right? So they can be a little bit smaller than that, but you can see the scale as uh, a huge difference in scale. So. Um, so those are basically the two main ones to pick from um, if you want to go big. Of course, the next one is TFTs. So yeah. I had a few things on my uh, desk since uh, we're doing this. So this is the, uh, the badge uh, that you saw. Um, this is running with MicroPython and it has touch sensor so I can make it go forward and backwards. Uh, for people who didn't get the badge, this is how to make your own one uh, with a, your own board. This is running C++ to see how quickly I can flip the image. Um, and this is the, the Franken board that uh, was mentioned earlier. Uh, I'm still working on the code. Um, the dog ate my homework, I'm sorry. It's running C++ in the middle. And basically I just added on the back um, 
an extra connections to do SPI to a screen that is 9664 color. So it's a lot nicer. Um, but I just have to fix this a little bit. And if you really just want to go high in pixels, that's what I used to do. I used to run uh, those TFTs. That one is a 32240. If you remember um, the uh, IOTAS, that's actually the screen that we had on it. And this one allowed me to write code uh, in the plane or while traveling without uh, carrying something stupid big like that, big and heavy and breakable. Now, um, the next level, if you want to program, is to actually run this on your computer. And this was what I was saying earlier as uh, part of the presentation. Uh, now I can write all the code on my laptop. I can debug in the plane. Uh, I don't have to be running anything, any hardware. And then later on, I just flip it to actual hardware. And OK, here I'll show you the remote. So the remote talks to the ESP32. ESP32 is doing its own display. Uh, the Raspberry Pi here, which is hidden in the back there, is connected to the ESP32, and it does its own display. And you can see that going to higher resolution makes a, a difference in how nice uh, it looks like. This, this is a probably pretty good example of a uh, much nicer resolution. Hopefully, you can see it on video. Yep, sure can. OK, well, thanks, Mark. We're sure. pretty much at the end of our time slot now. <laughs> you you always you, bring the bling. <laughs> we can yep. rely on you for that. Uh, so, uh, Mark, I'm sure we'll be hanging around for more of the conference, although he is not in a very good time zone. It's probably late at night right now. Uh, so it's, not, it's, not, it's not terrible. I'll be on. Not too bad. Okay. Yeah. So, we're going to go to another break, um, probably in about eight or nine minutes. We, we'll be back with the next presentation, which will be Leon Wright talking about hardware hacking for hugs and profit. So, thank you very much uh, and stick with us. See ya. All right. Nice talking to you. Bye.